Hi and welcome students. In this Microsoft Publisher 2016 tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Mail Merge Wizard to create form letters. Let's get started. So you'll see that I have a publication here, and I'm going to send this publication out, and basically I have a list of people that I need to send tickets to in this case for a drag race that's coming up, and I don't want to create 30 different forms or 100 different forms depending on how many people are coming to this race. I just want to create one. One way that we can do that is is to uh, create a mail merge and so I'm going to show you how to do that in today's lesson and first thing that I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit on my uh, publication and then if you don't have your paragraph markers turned on for this I recommend turning them on in the home tab paragraph group and this show hide button right here okay so I have my paragraph markers turned on one thing that I might want to do is insert the date so I'm going to insert the date right here in the middle and uh, the way that I insert the date in at the top is I go to the insert tab text group date and time and I'm going to just choose this date right here and update automatically um, this is good because this will always give me today's date so if I send out these letters in a future date it'll have that date there that way I don't have to uh, worry about maybe sending out tickets with the old date on it so once again that's the uh, insert tab text group date and time button and then you just choose the format and click OK alright so I got the date right there I'm gonna press enter a couple times to start uh, thinking about typing out this form and so the first thing that I'm gonna do if I want to start working on a mail merge is I'm gonna go to the mailings tab right up here at the top and on the mailings tab I'm gonna go over here to the start group and I'm gonna click the mail merge arrow this button right here mail merge create one document and send it to multiple people so if I'm sending out these tickets in the mail and I don't want to create multiple documents this is the easiest way to do it you can insert fields like name or address and you can even customize your own fields which, which I'm going to show you how to do right now. So you click the mail merge arrow and you go right here to step-by-step -step mail merge wizard and you click on that. That's going to open up a pane on the right side of the page and this pane is where we choose how we want the recipients to be listed. Now if you have an Excel spreadsheet or Outlook contacts that you wanted to send this to, you would go right here to use an existing list or select from Outlook contacts respectively. Alright, down here is what the one I'm going to choose which is type a new list and I'm just going to type out a couple names. I'm not going to type too many just for the sake of uh, keeping the video short but I'm going to go right here to type a new list. Uh, this is good for if you just have maybe five or ten names and you don't want to put it on, a, put it on an Excel spreadsheet that's a good option option for this one. So I'm going to put type a new list and then I'm going to click next create or connect to a recipient list and so I choose next which takes me to step two of seven um, but before we get there it opens up this new address list dialog box and when we have the new address list dialog box open the first thing that we need to do is make sure that the columns are only fields that we need. By default um, publisher is going to put in certain columns and so if I want to customize those I go right here to customize columns and here's where I can choose which columns I'm actually interested in keeping things like title first name last name company name let's say that I'm sending these to individual people and I don't want company name to be there anymore I'm gonna click on company name and go right over here to delete Okay, it's going to open up a dialog box that says Microsoft Publisher. When you delete the company name field, any information found in this field will also be deleted. So if I had this uh, already filled out up here and I clicked on delete, it's actually going to delete that data there. But since I haven't typed anything yet, that's fine. I'm going to click yes. Alright, I'm also going to delete the uh, some of the fields here at the bottom like home phone. I'll delete that one. Uh, right here is work phone. I'm going to delete that one. And as I mentioned before, this is actually going to be a form that sends out information on how many tickets a person has ordered and it's going to include the uh, tickets with it. So I want email address right here. I'm actually going to change that one to be number of tickets. And so right here you'll see uh, the rename button. And if I click right here on rename, it's going to open up the email address. And now I'm going to just change this one to say number of tickets. Okay. So I type in number of tickets and then I click OK and you'll notice that when I click OK number of tickets is displayed over here. Alright now I'm going to click OK. 
You'll notice that up here at the top are all of our field headings, all the way from title, first name, last name, to where we finished over here with country and uh, number of tickets. Okay, so we get all the way over to this point, and I noticed that maybe I don't need country or region. If everybody's located in my country, I don't need that. So I'm going to go right here to customize columns and go to country or region and click delete. And yes, and click OK. It's always good to double check these columns up at the top to make sure that they're only fields that you need. Don't include any fields that you don't need. And now this is where you begin typing in your data. <clears throat> Again, if you're going to do a list like this one uh, and you're typing it in, in here, make sure you're pressing tab between each one. So you see between each field that I type, I'm going to type in a tab on my keyboard and that's going to make it really easy for me to type this in as quickly as possible. Now as I mentioned I'm not going to spend the whole video just typing out um, different names and addresses um, because obviously nobody wants to see that but I am going to type two in here and use these two ticket holders for my example. Um, again if you're using a uh, um, a large list like something that you need to type in a lot of information into I recommend using Excel for that rather than this um, program within access okay so I'm gonna type in Karen and Javier here Karen ordered two tickets and Javier ordered three tickets so if everything goes correctly at the end of the mail merge we'll be able to see not only their name address um, and other informa information, but also the amount of tickets that they ordered within the letter. All right, so right here, I'm typing in the last few things, and we are now ready to move forward. So you see the difference between the two entries. Okay, we have Karen who ordered three, two tickets and Javier who ordered three tickets. And so now uh, I got these two typed in. Once you enter in your data and you feel like it's correct, a good thing to do is just double check your data just to make sure it's looking good. If everything's looking good at this point, you can click the OK button. And you'll no notice that it asks you to save, okay? And this is an address list, and this is actually a Microsoft at Office address list, so it's .m db and so it's kind of like a database and so this is a database with your addresses and if I want to name it something that I can remember and I'll just go ahead and keep it in my data sources folder which is the default folder for these types of things and I'm just gonna call it something that I can remember like ticket orders so I type in ticket orders and I click save okay so now I have my two fields I have uh, the fields or uh, my two entries I have the database saved everything's looking pretty good I double checked my entries to make sure everything was typed in correctly that way it goes to the correct people okay and so now I'm gonna click OK and you'll see that now it moves me on to step two of three and so um, what I'm going to do now is basically just make sure that I read the directions here on step two or three and it basically says we clicked OK and so what we're going to do is in the mail merge task pane uh, we're going to start thinking about the address and how we want this to be displayed okay and uh, right here we are currently clicked right here okay and I'm gonna go down one more and so what we could do at this point is start filling in our fields now each of these fields that are up here are um, fields that we entered in manually just now and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna enter in the address block what the address block is is that's the uh, combination of the title first name last name address one address two city state and zip okay so that's the address block and so rather than clicking on all of these up here I'm just gonna go right here to this button that says address block Okay, and this is address block and so you just choose the style that you want and you click OK and you'll see address block is displaying Okay, and um, now that the address block is here I'm gonna press enter a few times and so now I'm ready to write my greeting okay and so one thing that I could do right here is enter in the greeting line this is a customized line that has the person's name on it and so what we're gonna do is right over here it says greeting line go ahead and click on that and this one says dear Mrs. Siegfried and this is the uh, 
grading line. Okay, and so you can kind of just look over these, see what you want it to say here. Um, they have dear sir, dear ma'am, and also uh, to whom it may concern. And so I'm just going to leave this as default and press enter. Okay, and so these are all codes that again enter in the person's address and the person's name and then I press enter a few more times and now what we're ready to do is after the greeting line we're ready to actually type what the person is going to see for the um, letter portion of this and so I'm going to put something like thank you for ordering tickets for Sonic Saturday on July 15th 2019 and closed is your order Four, and then this is where I want the number of tickets to be displayed so rather than just typing order for your tickets I want them to know how many tickets are supposed to be enclosed luckily I already entered in that data from the previous steps which is right up here where it says n number of tickets and so I'm going to click on that and it says your order for number of tickets okay so that looks good okay I'll put a period after that Alright, next thing I'm going to do is uh, type in your seating is the best available at the time of purchase. That looks good. And then I'll put something like enjoy the race. Sincerely. And then my name. All right, so I went ahead and typed all that in. This is looking good. And then uh, the tickets will ideally be in here with this form. And so now what we're gonna do is right down here at the bottom right, we're gonna click on create, um, or sorry, uh, on the next one, which is create merged publication. Click that. And you'll see, it looks like the mail merge is done. Okay, but notice that you don't actually see anything here. So it might be kind of confusing. It just says address block, lines, all of that. And so the way that you actually preview the results is you go right up here to the mailings tab, preview results group, and click right here on preview, preview results. And watch what happens. You click that and check it out. Now it has recipient one right here and it says Miss Karen Siegfried and then it gives her address gives her name right there dear Miss Siegfried here's your order enclosed for two tickets so you just want to check all of those entered in uh, groups and all those fields that we entered in before that one looks really good now how can we check on Javier right up here where it says preview results just hit next and you'll see there's Javier Javier's order there's dear Mr. Navarro and then over here three tickets Okay, so that one looks good too. All right, so now we finished up the mail merge, so it's time to print it. And so we're going to go right up here to mail merge, and it says print. And we click on print, and we see Javier's right here. And if we click back or forward down here, you'll see every other person that's on your list. So once again, uh, it's very important to make sure that you either type everything in correctly um, on Publisher or type it correctly on Excel and import the list or you could obviously send it to your Outlook contacts as well. So uh, that's how to create a mail merge using Microsoft Publisher 2016. I hope that this video was very helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and have a great day.